So, hello, welcome to the West Australian Experimental Lab for Shipwrecks and Mad Science. Um, ever since we started the foundation and looked into the oil in Chuck Lagoon, one of the things we've been missing is the capability to detect and quantify oil in the shipwrecks. The conventional technique is to swim down into the fuel tank, go as low as you can, start poking holes in it, and keep poking holes up into the thing until oil comes out. Two big problems with that, one, poking holes, and two, oil coming out. By that technique, you have to deal with an oil leak if you find oil. Now, we've never been happy with that. Um, the risks on it is, is huge, and it's not the sort of thing that, uh, that we really want to try. What we wanted was the device that goes ping. We would like a nice device that we just walk up, press on the side of a, uh, a rusty hull, and determine what's behind it, is it oil or is it water? This is a real one. This is one that's uh, used for propane cylinders based on ultrasonics. You just shove it against the side of the tank. Green light says that uh, there's propane. Red light says there's no propane. Work out between the two, you know where the level of your propane is in the cylinder. But as we've looked into it, it looks like it's going to be costly, it's going to be complicated, and it may be years before we actually get a device like this that's suitable for use underwater. Sometimes it takes being asked simple questions by a smart guy to work out that you've been in the wrong direction all the time. And that's the realization that I've had over the last couple of weeks. I was talking to Chris Perkis, and he was asking me a bunch of very simple questions about how the techniques for detecting oil work. And he was talking about thermal conductivity, electrical conductivity, all this other stuff. I had lots and lots of reasons why it wouldn't work to detect oil. And then a couple of weeks later, 3 a.m., wasn't sleeping very well, all of a sudden I had one of these great epiphanies. And it's very simple. Oil is difficult to detect. It doesn't conduct electricity, it doesn't do much. If you don't stick it inside your car and burn it, it's not really an awful lot of use. But water, Water is really easy to detect. Anyone can detect water. It's difficult not to detect water. But why would you dive 40 meters down under the ocean and go looking for water? The realization was there's one place under the ocean where there's no water, and that's in an oil-filled fuel tank. So if you can detect water, you can detect the absence of water. And if you can detect the absence of water in a fuel tank, you're looking at where the oil is. So the easiest way to detect water is through electrical conductivity. So the device is as simple as it can be. We have a float, two electrodes on it, go back through a wire, to a normal dive reel, to the box, and the box is literally just a light, a battery, a couple of resistors to make the thing work properly. So when the float goes into water, the seawater is conductive, so it creates an electrical circuit between the two contacts. Between the battery, a light comes on. When the float goes into oil, the oil is an insulator, breaks the circuit, the light goes off. It really is that simple. So here we have our fabulous model of Chuk Lagoon, complete with our upside down Japanese shipwreck. This one happens to be carrying a cargo of canola oil. We tested the device on diesel and motor oil, but uh, the wife is getting a little bit upset with the smell wafting through the house. So we've gone back to canola oil, but the principle is exactly the same. So as we said, this is a water detection device. So when the two electrodes on the float go into the water, we get a nice blue light appearing on the box. Take the float out of the water, blue light goes off. The place where there's no water underwater is the oil in the uh, fuel tank. So if we take the buoy and we feed it in through a hole in the bottom of the fuel tank, as we're feeding it in the bottom, it goes in in water and our light stays on. Then as we take the float and release it and let it float up into the fuel layer, as soon as it hits the oil layer, the connection between the two electrodes is broken and our light goes off. And all we have to do is measure the amount of wire that we've let the float go in, so how far the float has floated up from our hole, and we'll get the level of the oil, or the bottom of the oil, above the hole that we've drilled. So if we pull the buoy back down again, out the oil layer, goes back into the water, electrical circuit, light goes back on again, release the float again, let it head back up into the oil, 
hits the oil again, light goes off, and we can confirm our measurement. Now you might think that you don't trust my magic box and wouldn't it be nice if we can have a more reliable way of confirming the result? Another thing that Chris put me onto is this stuff called color cut paste. Now this stuff is used by ships to detect water and diesel in their fuel tanks. And what it is, is a paste, sort of like toothpaste sort of stuff, that starts out a sort of pale pink sort of color and when it touches any sort of hydrocarbon, diesel, lube oil, kerosene, anything like that, it turns a nice bright red. So what I've done is I put these lovely little green beads on the string that goes with the float. Now each one of the string beads has a small hole in it. We can pack that full of color cut paste and each one of these, as it goes up, if this thing hits an air pocket, the light will go off but the color cut will stay pink. If it's oil, we get a nice bright red bead, we know we've hit oil. If we put color cut all the way down in the beads, down the rope, then we can confirm the difference between the farthest part of the float that we've let go up and the bottom of the oil according to the lowest bead that has the red color. This provides us with a nice analog way of detecting exactly the same thing and if even if all of the devices failed and all the boxes and the lights blew, we could just cover the string and the float with a color cut paste and we could still do exactly the same measurement but doing it in a chemistry based way instead of an electrical based way. So the procedure for our survey would then become, we'd go into the wreck using the plans, work out the lowest possible place that we can get to the fuel tank itself. Now one of the crucial differences between what I'm proposing and the normal situation is that we're only gonna drill one hole and we're gonna try and drill into water. Now, no fuel tank is ever 100% full. So when it sinks and it flips upside down so the oil goes to the top, there's always gonna be a decent sized space of water at the bottom of the tank. And if we can reach that, we can drill into it and we're not gonna hit oil. We're gonna do what we can to avoid hitting the oil. So the procedure will be, we'll get small drill, drill into the lowest possible part of the fuel tank we can access and take something like a nice long syringe, stick it in, suck out a sample, look inside, see if there's oil. If there is, we know the fuel tank is 100% full of oil, and we'll have to deal with that, and we'll have a leak, and we'll have to deal with that in the same way as you would have done for the multiple holes for the conventional method. But most of the time, what we should be doing is going through and getting a nice bit of nasty seawater to come out from the hole. We then get our underwater drill, with a nice hole cut and saw on it. This is again 30 bucks from Bunnings for a metal capable 20 millimeter um, thickness that it can cut and drill a hole through big enough to, uh, to get the float through. Now I'm working on minimizing the size of the float but we're probably looking at a hole around about an inch but as I said we'll be looking at something that we're going into water not oil. And once you've done that one hole that's the only hole we're going to do. So the device itself is simple, it's cheap. You can build these for about 20 or 30 bucks depending on how uh, high quality housing that you want to do for it. If we were doing uh, shallow wrecks, then cheap and nasty GoPro rip-offs would be fine. If you're going to a proper deep wreck, then you'd probably get a uh, real GoPro housing and they can go down to 100 meters. So uh, we can create this technology, very little, only one seal required, uh, not difficult to do. There may be a whole bunch of practicalities that we haven't done yet, so we haven't actually taken this underwater, although I've stuck this box in a bucket for uh, a couple of days just to make sure that the seal holds. Um, as soon as summer comes and the water warms up, we'll be taking this out into the ocean and uh, doing some practical trials. But the beauty of it is that it's simple, it's repairable. If you flood this in, um, housing, most likely the battery um, will die, but the circuit will be fine. I'll just clean it out, dry it out, put a new battery in, and she should be good to go. And I'll be testing that again uh, soon. We do eventually hope to develop the device that goes ping and have the completely non-intrusive method of measuring oil in wrecks, but likely that's gonna be a fair way off. So we have now the capability to detect oil in wrecks. You're welcome.